My name is Frank Hamer. I'm a former Texas Ranger. I've just been hired by Colonel Lee Simmons to hunt down Bonnie Parker and Clyde Burrow. Now we'll bring them in, dead or alive. Now Bonnie and Clyde are killers, cold-blooded killers. They're wanted in the deaths of five law enforcement officers, God knows how many civilians. And they have committed every crime you can imagine as if they're our heroes. They're not. Read it again. I just read it. I know, but I want to hear it again. I've read it over a hundred times, Clyde. I'm sure you could recite it by heart by now. I like to hear you say it, sugar. Just once more for me. <sighs> the Beginning of the End by Bonnie Parker. Now the tale I'm about to tell you is the truth, the author's side. And if anyone tells you different, then they didn't know Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, they have a bad reputation. Folks say they steal and cheat and kill. I'm not gonna deny that, but this wasn't just a cheap thrill. There's a difference between fact and fiction. The truth has many sides. Right can be wrong within the law and justice never really abides. But through all the crimes and the murders, there's been one man by my side. He's the love of my life and the wrong that is right. And his name is none other than Clyde. I love you, Bonnie. I love you, Moon. He's gone through a lot with the coppers who jailed him and threw away the key, but he wouldn't give up or stop fighting until we both could be free. The path we choose is not easy, no matter what the rest of them say. But we refuse to submit to the system while there's still some light in the day.
really quit it. We're gonna be late for class. You know, you got more class than us in the entire school. <sighs> we keep that up, we're gonna have to get married. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> no, I told you, I'm a good girl. No, I mean, let's get married. Right now. Today. I thought we said we wait till I was 16. Less than six days. You really think you're gonna look or feel any different in six days than you do right now? No. <laughs> so? Well, let's be crazy together. Bonnie Parker. <laughs> Will you marry me? I want words for my public speaking, you know that? For the first time in my life, I don't know what to say. What's the one word answer? Kind of like a true or false question. Yes. <laughs> yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, now we just got to get you a ring for me and we'll be all set. Well, I'm going to get you something. Even better than a ring. Done. So, what do you think? You said I was crazy. You're the wild one. Wildly in love with you. I'm the luckiest man alive. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll just wait out here until you're finished. And don't you forget it. I don't know about this buck. They're making an awful racket back there. They'll claw the turkey. Kind of hard to teach a turkey how to keep his mouth shut. I'll tell you what, though, we're going to make a pretty penny off of them come holidays. Stand Christmas season, they'll be a mouthful of bird. <laughs> I just wish they'd keep the mouth shut. Well, hell, you prefer to steal cars, make ends meet? I prefer just about anything to this. I may never eat turkey again. <laughs> well, at least they don't squeal to the cops. No, but they make just about every other sound there is. I take that back. They can squeal too. You losing? In this truck? All right, you're right. Pull over. Just let me do the talking. I don't trust you, big brother. I was thinking of going with all those turkeys. Well, we're just uh, running them through to the turkey farm in the outskirts of town, Sheriff. Just making a delivery, that's all. <laughs> really? I don't know all the farmers in my district. Who are you delivering this to? To uh, anybody that needs a turkey delivery. You look like you could use one. Well, maybe even two. Free of charge, of course. Where'd you get all these turkeys, son? Uh, Clyde, why don't you tell this nice sheriff where we uh, came into possession of all these fine birds here? Huh? They came with the truck. <laughs> and where did you get the truck, boys? Well, now, let's see. I think we picked this truck up and, uh... And where do you think you're going, boy? Hmm? Jail? The world may conspire against you, and you won't know which way to turn. 
So focus your goal and get through the hole, because victory is something you earn. Dear Diary, before opening this year's diary, I wish to tell you that I have a Roman husband with a Roman mind. I told you I have to go out. But Mom and Rose are on the way over. We're all going out to celebrate. Yeah, I already wished you a happy birthday this morning. After I reminded you. Bonnie, I have a lot on my mind. Police are breathing down my neck. I don't need you doing it, too. Yeah, well, I'm sure when you left last month, you found someone to take my place in that department. You honestly think I'm sleeping around? Who said anything about sleeping? Keep this up, I may not come back. What kind of husband leaves his wife on her birthday? The unhappy kind. I hope they catch you. I hope they catch you when they lock you away forever. Look at you, 17-year-old and all grown up. Old enough to realize I married a child. Does that feel like the fist of a child? Hey, I'm sorry I hit you, but he, he was goading me. He was goading you? Do you know what that means? To goad is to prod or to urge. It's also a very long stick with a pointed end used for prodding animals. Kind of like this. Oh, get out of my house, bastard! And don't come back! Do we come at a bad time? I think we came just in time. <gasps> Did he hit you? Just once, Mom. I think I won this round. You clocked him good. Oh, a lady should never raise her hand to her husband, honey. Bonnie! You open this door right now. Okay, just as soon as I get off the phone with Sheriff Brady. Hey, is that a siren I hear outside? I'll be back, Bonnie. I don't hear any sirens. I didn't really call the police, Ma. I would never do that. Not even to a man I hated. I didn't know you and Roy were having such troubles. He isn't a good man, Miss Parker. He even came on to me last month, the creep. <sighs> My best friend. Hey, we should make our New Year's resolutions right now. This New Year's, I resolve to take no man or nothing seriously. Let all men go to hell. Bonnie Parker, what would your dearly departed father say? I wasn't referring to him. <sighs> he was such a good man. Worked himself to death for us. I know, Ma. You've told me. But not all men have the same moral code. He will be back, you know. Yeah, but I won't be. Hey, Mom, how'd you feel about me coming back to help out the house for a little while? Well, you know, you're always welcome, honey. Good, then let's get you packed. <laughs> what about your birthday? Mom, this is the best birthday present you could give me right now. Believe me. And then we can all really go out and celebrate at the end of the week. There's a new picture coming out on Thursday. <gasps> the talking one? And singing. But all, all the pictures are silent. No, no, not anymore, Ma. This is the world's first talking picture, the jazz singer. I bet it's going to be huge. Times are changing, Miss Parker, for the better. Some people are put here to test you. They make you feel less than you are, while others will show you there's still some hope to be more than a shooting star. Dear Diary, I have been the happiest and most miserable woman this year. I wish the old year would have taken my past with it. I mean, all my memories, but I can't forget Roy. I'm very blue tonight. No word from him. I feel he's gone for good. Sure I'm lonesome. Sorry about your brother, Clyde. It was bound to happen. How long is he in for? Four years. What you gonna do? I'll get by. Thanks again for the food. Just don't tell my boss. I'll do you one better. I won't rob you either. <laughs> Deal. Hey, you know my best friend just started working here last week. You wanna meet her? I'm not looking for a girl, Rosa. Don't need nobody slowing me down. No offense. None taken. 
Well, let me know when you're ready to meet someone. Rosa? Could you use some help in here? Coming right back. Better? <sighs> Sounds like a real ball breaker. You don't know how right you are. Like I said, thanks, but no thanks. I'll catch you later. Not if I catch you first. Nobody catches me first. Enjoy the turkey sandwiches. Turkey? Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, Bonnie. What is this, third time this week? So what's good today? You got any more of those delicious red beans? Now, Ted, you keep ordering them red beans because you really like them or because you know they're my favorite dish? Well, can I say both? Hey there, Ted. How's the mail? Mm, the mail is fine. You delivering any big packages? No. Because I only accept big packages in the rear. <laughs> Lighten up there, Ted. I'm just joshing you. How you doing, Bonnie? You, uh, you're looking mighty fine today. Uh, thank you, Ted. But to tell you the truth, I'm bored. Crapless. That's something you won't have to worry about, Ted. Especially if you eat another plate of those beans. <laughs> you're working here, I've come to get you. Are you out of your mind? You've been gone for over a year. You just expect me to what, come home with you? You're still married, Bonnie, and my wife. Hey, the lady doesn't seem like she wants to go with you. Oh, yeah? Who the hell are you, mister? Ted, Ted, Ted Hinton. You a cop? No, 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 he works at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, don't tell me you're having an affair with the mailman. That would just be sad. He's just a customer boy, nothing else. Oh, oh yeah? Well then sit down and eat! Get out of my cafe, Roy. Bonnie's not taking you back anymore. Stay out of my business, Ow. Rosa. You're the one who turned Bonnie against me in the first place. Uh, are you uh, really blaming Rosa? This is you, Roy. You're the one who tried to sleep with her and I don't know how many others. This marriage is such a joke. And I see that now. I want nothing to do with you, Roy Thornton. You can rot in hell for all I care. You don't mean that? Look at my face and tell me I'm lying. I leave now, I ain't never coming back. Can I take that as a promise? Goodbye, buddy. Oh! Don't make a move, son! Drop your weapon and put your hands over your head. How long do you think I'll get this time? <laughs> oh, son. Old robbery ain't no walk in the park. You're gonna need years and years for this one. I'm afraid. Now get in there. Don't ever put your hands on me again. Get in there. I think you are. Goodness, the police came. We gotta keep these criminals off our streets. He might have killed you if it weren't for the sheriff. You're a very lucky man. You off to work? Right after I check in on Rosamond. Terrible what he done. You know how I think about divorce, but I think you should stay far away from that Roy Thornton. Oh, Mama. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about that. 
He was just sentenced to five years in prison. I'm a free woman again. Yeah, well, don't you be too free. <laughs> Mom, between shifts at the cafe and taking care of Rosa, I hardly have time for myself right now. Mm -hmm. I know you, Bonnie Parker, and you're getting that itch. When you get bored, that's when the trouble starts. Hey, Mom, you been reading my diary again? I don't have to. You're getting all fidgety. I seen you this way in school when you were 15, right before you met Roy, and I'm seeing that now. I suppose you were what? All married and settled down by the time you were 19? No, I wasn't in that big a hurry, and neither should you be, neither. No, I'm just taking it day by day. Uh-huh. You have a good day now. This is New Year's Day, January 1st. I went to a show, saw Ken Maynard in the Overland stage, and very blue. Well, I must confess this New Year's night I got drunk trying to forget, drowning my sorrows in bottled hell. Sure, I'm blue. Everything has gone wrong today. Why don't something happen? What a life. Aren't you supposed to be at the cafe? Well, aren't you supposed to be resting? I'm at home, ain't I? Go and stir crazy around here and tell me about it. Jesus, Rosa, you must like it cold in here. Well, I'm trying to save a little money since I'm not working right now. Thank you very much. You know what? There are only so many times a girl can apologize. Why don't you just head up onto bed and I'll make you some hot chocolate before I take off. How's that sound? Well, I won't fight you about hot chocolate. Good. Now get going. I'll be up there in a few. Remember, I like it hot. first. Well, I was here first. You don't live here. Well, neither do you. Well, I know that. Rosa Mary Judy lives here. She's my friend. She's my best friend. I was just making her some hot chocolate. I can see that. You're the girl that works down there at the cafe with her, huh? Did my uniform give me away again? I think your milk's ready. Oh, I can do that. Well, I came down here to check on Rosa. I might as well help. My name's Claude Barrow. Bonnie Parker. So, what do you do? When well, you're not stirring hot chocolate, I mean. I get by. Doing what? Whatever it takes. Are you a bad man, Mr. Barrow? I don't think so. Please call me Claude, Mrs. Parker. Mrs. <laughs> Parker. That is my mother. I'm just Bonnie. I don't think I would ever put Justin and Bonnie in the same sentence that way. <laughs> well, I think you can stop staring. It looks ready. Want to take a taste? I want to blow on it first. Might be a little too hot. I can handle the heat. Well, so can I when need be. I thought the hot chocolate was for me. It is. Uh, we were just coming up to give to you. I take it introductions have already been made. See what you've been missing? I do now. Well, I'll leave you two to get better acquainted. Go easy on this one. I have to go <laughs> to work. I've been pulling double shifts ever since Rose's accident. You want me to give you a ride? You have a car? I never have a problem finding a car.
your car? You said you needed a ride. No, you offered me a ride. And you took it. After you took it, I see. The cars were created for a specific purpose, to get people where they need to go. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, our car's just going to waste. So this is Clyde Barrow's view of life? Sure, you could say that. In fact, I kind of like the sound of that. Again, what if the law doesn't approve of your views? Well, then I guess I don't approve of the law. Why do I always do it? Do what? Fall for bad men. Because we're more fun to be around. Oh, yeah? Improve it. in place, but I still have a key. Oh, but don't worry. He's not coming back for a long, long time. took you so long. I fell in love with you the first moment we met making hot chocolate together. <laughs> All right, I get it, you love me. All right. I want you to know something. When I'm with a guy, I'm loyal. And I expect the same from him. Bonnie, if I would have met you five years ago, I would have never been with anyone else. <laughs> Do you mean that? From now on, it's just you and me. For better or for worse. And in sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Well, you may kiss the bride. Clyde Chestnut Barrel, you were under arrest. You had the right to remain silent. You give up that right. What's this all about? Grocery store robbery in Waco has your fingerprints all over it, Clyde. And as you know, you already have them on file. You're going with us, son. No! Don't worry, honey. They can't keep us apart for long. I'll be out before you know it. Well, they know it. One thing I'm living is that I understand. It's not what you have. He won't do the full stretch, Bonnie. He didn't kill no one. He'll be out soon, you'll see. Wouldn't count on that. Why well, you see that, Ted? I've been reading about it. Dangerous place, that prison. Wouldn't want to spend one night there, let alone the next 14 years. People die in that facility all the time. And why are you so interested? Because I'm studying to become a police officer, Bonnie. Figure one day I'll be a sheriff. Well, sheriff's deputy, at least. Congratulations, Ted. That's just what the world needs, another crummy cop. Yeah, well, someone's got to protect you from all the slime you keep getting involved with. Roy Thornton's and the Clyde Barrows. Hey, I don't need no help from no man, especially not from you, Ted. Calm down, Bonnie, calm down. 
Okay, you better take that pie and go. This isn't a good time. Clyde Barrow is just an ordinary, two-bit, low-life criminal, Bonnie. Someone should take him out and shoot him before he does any more damage. You don't know what you're talking about. And if you get near my Clyde, he'll kill you. You understand? Not if I kill him first. Not if I kill you first. You don't mean that. I'll come a little closer. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Ted, you better get out of here if you know what's good for you. She's the one that doesn't know what's good for her. Can't even see it when it's standing right in front of her face. Clyde Barrow is a walking dead man, and so are you if you go back to him, Bonnie Parker. <laughs> you, you broke my nose. Again. I can have you arrested for assault. No, no, her fist just slipped. It was an accident. Oh, go ahead. Tell everyone about how you were beaten up by Bonnie Parker. I never eat in this place again. Yeah, good riddance. Hey, Bonnie. We can refuse service to someone who gets out of line. But we can't beat the crap out of them. Marilla, can I take the rest of the day off? I think that's a good idea. You gotta find an outlet for all this pent up anger, girl. Hey, you like to write? Come on, random letter. Dearest Clyde. I never did want to love you, and I didn't even try. You just made me. Now I don't know what to do. I hate being apart, and I can't imagine what it must be like for you in that place. But I want you to know that I'm waiting for you. I hear your mom is working on getting you a pardon. I love you with all my heart. Bonnie. Dear baby, the walls here are cold and unfriendly. I just read your sweet letter, and... I sure was glad to get it, for I am awfully lonesome and blue. Who you write to, Clyde? Your mama? There's a little old Clyde bitch, his mama. I'm writing to my girl that'd leave me alone. Oh, there ain't no alone time in here. Not for you. If you're lonely, just come see me. Say, sugar, these local guys are making so much noise I can't write. So I will finish this tomorrow. After a long, lonesome night, I will try and finish. It's Easter Sunday, and I sure wish I was outside with you. Gosh, honey, I bet we could have a good time today. Where were you last Easter, honey? And who was you with? Clyde, my darling, nobody understands what we have. I almost killed that Ted Hinton for the things he said about you. He still is always hanging around the cafe trying to date me. He's gonna end up on a date to the great beyond if he doesn't quit it. Bonnie, don't you start dating other guys while I'm in here. The thought of you with another man is too much for me to handle. I don't wanna hear about any other guys in your life. I don't know if I can take much more of this. I'm in a bad way and you're not helping. I can't even begin to tell you some of the things I've witnessed in this hellhole. Clyde, I hope you keep accepting my letters. I've been faithful to you. There's nobody else in my life besides Ma and Rosa. They are the only thing keeping me going while I wait for you to get out. I love you more than any woman has loved any man, but I don't appreciate what you said to me. It's as if you don't trust me. I love you, but I can't love a man who doesn't trust me. Dear baby, why did you say you didn't know whether I would accept or not? Now, honey, you know darn well I didn't mean what I said in my last letter. I'm just jealous of you, and I can't help it. And why shouldn't I be? If I was as sweet to you as you are to me, you would be jealous too. I'm so happy to hear you say that. You'll be out soon, Clyde. I know it. Your mom is working real hard on getting you that pardon. I bet you're out by the first of the new year. Then we can be together again. I will make you. Hey, Clyde. I picked out what you're gonna be for Halloween. My bitch. If you ever touch me, Ed, you're never gonna be touching anyone ever again. Oh, I'm gonna do more than touch you, pretty boy. I'm gonna make you mine.
I told you your mama was making progress. She got you early parole, just like I said. Thanks for picking me up. Are you okay? I'll be fine. Let's get as far away from this place as we can. I'll die before I ever go back to a place like that. I mean it, Bonnie. What is it? You've been acting really different ever since we left Huntsville. I am different, Bonnie. That was no prison, it was a hellhole. There was no justice in there. And what I saw and what I had to do to stay alive. Yeah. I read all about that Ed Crowder in the papers. He deserved it though, right? I did what I had to do and I'd do it again. But I wasn't the only one. And then the guards, the ones they call law enforcers, they were killing prisoners just for the hell of it. And Major Crossing, he was the worst. He said it was to keep the rest of us in line. But many of the men didn't do nothing to deserve what they got. Reform is not what they were interested in. I'm telling you, Bonnie, the place needs to be burnt to the ground and all them prisoners set free. If I could figure out a plan, I'd liberate the entire prison. I'd kill any guard that got in my way. It's not so great out here either, Claude. Since you've been away, the world's only gotten worse. Do you know that they say the unemployment rate is supposed to be 25% of the population this year? The government hasn't been able to fix the Wall Street crash yet? No. More and more people are losing their jobs. I see friends living out of their cars right now. First they take away our liquor, then they take our jobs. And what are the banks doing? Closing. Left and right. People are losing their entire life savings. That ain't right. That's no way to live. Mm. Something's gotta be done. Where's my brother? Buck? Back in jail. I caught him again? He went on his own, actually. Your mom and his new wife drove him up to complete his original sentence for that burglary he did in Denton. And Josh and me. How bad is it out here? It's really bad, Clyde. But hey. I think that his return to prison is what helped your mama get in that pardon for you. I gotta get him out. I gotta get all those prisoners out. <laughs> Can't do that without a lot of money and a hell of a lot of firepower if you really do want to raid the place. Well, I guess I better start stocking up. Hmm. We gonna start robbing again? Bonnie. <laughs> you know I want you by my side. But I'm not gonna force you to partake in my lifestyle. I don't, we're not married, not officially. And I would understand if you okay. didn't. Okay. You can just stop right there. We are in this together, Claude Barrow. It's just you and me. The rest of the world be damned. But if we are gonna do this. Guess I better give you your birthday present first. But my birthday's not till next week. I know. Mayor, just open it. Gloves. Yeah, they keep your hands warm. And they don't leave behind any unwanted fingerprints. Always thinking, ain't you? Huh? Someone around here has to. What is that? Oh. That's called a parking meter. They just started installing them this year. Apparently, you're supposed to put money in the meter so you can legally park here. <laughs> pay for parking on a public street? And what happens if you don't pay? Oh, the police write you a ticket or so I hear you just have to pay them instead. <laughs> Unbelievable. America, land of the free where nothing's free. Yeah, but we're gonna change all that. Are you scared? Excited? Okay, remember, we're just taking guns and ammunition. I'm with you. Let's do this.
Tennessee And found her wrapped in ecstasy With another man Found a boy southbound train Headed down the Bourbon Street In the morning rain Yeah, yeah Up she was bought in the And when the whiskey and her memory combined Said the flames of hell ignite Here's that devil's first inside You take this bottle to be your wife Then step up to the altar What are we gonna do? I'm not going back to jail. I'm not giving up. Well, what if they catch us? Not us. Me, okay? When I turn the next corner, I'm gonna slow down and I want you to jump out. What? They can't catch us together. They'll follow me. You get away and you deny everything. Then they won't be able to pin it on you. Well, I'm not leaving you, Clyde. It's for your own safety. We'll both be safe for this way. Trust me. Do you trust me? Where's my life? I'll be back with you, I promise. I live without you. Deputy hit now, Bonnie. And this time you're going with me, whether you like it or not. I'm innocent, she said before she climbed into bed. The story was always the same. It's a tale told to all when one takes a fall. And you never know who's to blame. A man is usually responsible, so says the woman at fault. But it's plain to see. The truth will be kept hidden deep in the vault. Just give him up, Bonnie. We know Clyde Barrow's behind the robbery. Tell us what we want to know, and you'll be out of here in no time. It's like I told you, Tip. I'm sorry, Deputy Hinton. I was on my way to see Rosa at the cafe when this alarm started going off, and these men ran out of the hardware store with guns. They kidnapped me, forced me into the back of their car, and then they threw me out on the side of the road like an animal, and that's where you found me. That's all I know. Did you know it was a stolen car? No. But I can't say I'm surprised. They seem like dangerous men. If they were gonna rob a store, I'm sure they were capable of stealing a car. And what they look like? Let me guess. One of them's wearing a dark suit, vest, white shirt, had brown hair and brown eyes. Can't say that I know they were wearing masks. But that sure sounds like a handsome fella. Fine. You're gonna be like that? You can just rob yourself forever. See if I care. Do you want to see me, Miss Parker? I do, Clyde, but not in my home. You are the reason that my daughter is in prison. I know, Miss Parker, and I, I just feel awful about it. I'm going to get her out, though. You just wait and see. No. I don't want you going near that jail. I'm working on it. The only thing they have on Bonnie is her association with you. And if they can't prove you had anything to do with that robbery, they got nothing on her neither. You understand me, boy? Yes, Miss Parker. But when Bonnie gets out, I'm coming for her. We love each other. We really do. I know she loves you. There's no denying that. And I love her 10 times as much. Then you do right by her. I never want to see my daughter in prison ever again. She's a good girl. She was a straight A student. She was raised in a loving home. And then she goes off and finds us Roy Thornton and now you. I, I just don't get it. 
Well, I can't speak for a first husband, but I'll never leave Bonnie. She'll be by my side till the day we die. You have to believe me, Miss Parker. Unfortunately, I do. You gotta promise me that you will take the best care of my daughter you can. I will. All right, then. Good afternoon, Miss Parker. Go, Miss Parker. Then go, I shall. Hey, Bonnie. Just because the grand jury didn't indict you because of lack of evidence doesn't mean that you're innocent. And Ted, just because you're a sheriff's deputy now, still doesn't mean you're a man. You picked me up from jail in a stolen car? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Just saying goodbye to my past. But now I'm saying hello to my future. You know, I'm mad at me? You said you'd come back for me, and you did. But don't you ever abandon me like that. From now on, where you go, I go. And what you do, I do. You want to light this world on fire? You pour the gasoline. You let me strike the match. Honey, with an attitude like that, we're gonna go down in history. Well, let's start making some.
Can I help you, Sheriff? Young love, you know how it is, don't you? I don't think he does, Clay. Hey, how about we all go for a little drive? Tell your people we ain't a bunch of nutty killers, Sheriff. Yeah, we're just some home people trying to get through this damn depression with a few bones. What you writing? Just jotting down our little adventures of prosperity. We're making history now, huh? As the crimes and the body count rises, the police always need to find blame. So they'll pin it on Bonnie and Clyde, because that's the name of the game. But sometimes the record needs fixing. Not all KC robberies are us, nor did we kidnap any babies. <laughs> Who really needs all that fuss? But news is news and stories are stories, and when times are so tough, it's easy to say, make the Barrow Gang pay. But come on, enough is enough. Their problem, officer? You were speeding. I wasn't speeding. Oh, yes, I'm afraid you were. I I'm gonna have to write you a ticket. I'll just take the ticket, honey. I wasn't speeding, though. Well, this is not the time or the place to settle it right now. You're right. Get in, we'll discuss it on the road. I really don't think I was speeding. Mm. So what you're saying is that you don't think of... Uh, I'm so sorry, hon, what's your name? Tom. Tom is for sale. You don't think that Tom here is very good at his job? I mean, 
You've been trying to watch for these sorts of things, haven't you, Tom? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And how fast would you say we were going? Close to 70. Damn, that is fast. I told you to pay attention. Does this car even go 70 miles per hour? Mm -hmm. I trust the young officer here. He looks like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I could have been mistaken. Aha, uh -huh. hear that, Bonnie? He might have made a mistake. Do you really think so? I do. I don't think a ticket is in order at all. In fact, I was just going to give you a warning. Oh, I mean, if that's all, surely we can do the same. Don't you think so, Clyde? I suppose so. Bonnie, don't forget the warning. Tom, if I were you, you find a new line of work where you won't meet such dangerous people as us. But you have a nice day. Clyde, you're doing it again. I guess I'll never learn. I'd like to make an announcement to keep all the policemen at bay. Our crimes are no longer illegal. We're becoming members of the NRA. Police? I don't know, but I can hear someone moving around out there. Whoever it is, I think they're already inside the apartment. Buck! <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, baby brother! Happy birthday, baby brother! Oh, little lady, please don't shoot my wife. She didn't mean no harm, I promise. Wife? Lucky number three? That's right. This here's my better half. Blanche Barrow. Welcome to <laughs> family, Blanche? <laughs> I've heard so much about you. And this must be the famous Bonnie Parker. In the flesh? So I can see. So how'd you get out? Prison break? Full pardon. Seems the police like it when you turn yourself in. That's a uh, real good behavior in their book. Yeah, you're doing their job for them. Well, that was Blanchard's idea. Better to be a free man than always on the run, right? I guess so. Honey, why don't we let Bonnie and Clyde get dressed and celebrate the day properly? It's a good idea. We got cake out there. And beer, too. That's <laughs> great. Well, you two look like a couple of movie stars. <laughs> to you, birthday boy. 24 on the 24th. It's got to mean something. Just means I'm getting older. And wiser. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Well, thanks, honey. Oh. Now, now. Clyde here's come a long way from his turkey stealing days. I tell you what, with y'all two in the newspaper like y'all are, why ain't Clyde's becoming a household name? Really? Not in a good way. How the heck did you find us anyway? Well, like I said, I've been following your exploits. And I know my little brother. Plus, Mom might give me a little inside info. <laughs> How is Mom? She's good, real good, actually. Getting by. Likes Blanche here a whole lot. Mwah. Your mother is a very nice lady. She just wants to see you and Buck get your lives back on track. Oh, really? And what track is that? The straight and narrow one that leads us all to a front row seat in the electric chair? It is never too late to atone for your sins. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you have to forgive Blanche here. She, uh, her pa's a preacher. It's in her blood. He's a minister, actually. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, Clyde, you want to help me get some stuff out of the car? Yeah, sure. We'll be right back, baby. I'll just help Bonnie clean up a little bit. No, right? Really? Hey, Buck, it's great seeing you and meeting Blanche and all, but if you guys are here to try to convince us to turn ourselves in, you got another thing coming. Oh, no, no. That might be what Ma and Blanche's idea is, but I know you better than that. Hell, I was the one that got you started on this path. What are you talking about? So what's up? I want in. Do what? I want to join the gang. Fact is, you two got something real good going here. Public loves you. Like a modern day Robin Hood. Uh, Robin Hood, I don't know about that. We're not exactly stealing from the rich to give to the poor. We're keeping it for ourselves. Well, I mean, I do have a plan. We're trying to get enough guns and stuff together to liberate the prisoners of Esau. All this for a jailbreak? 
Why? Because, Buck, the system doesn't work. You just got out. Do you feel reformed? Hell no. Matter of fact, I want to rob some banks. Make some real dough. Like I said, I've been following your travels, and y'all two are thinking way too small on this deal. Stealing cars and robbing a grocery store. That's not where the money's at. Well, we robbed a few banks, too. Oh, I know. But we're no-go bank. How much you get out of there? 300? 200. See, that's what I'm talking about. Well, we are in the middle of a depression. Which is why the public loves you, and the media's eating all this up. Hell, if I was you, I'd sub a few of those photos you showed me back there to your local news branch. Guarantee they'd run that in a heartbeat. You think they'd print some of our home pictures? Absolutely. You two are successfully bucking the whole system. You're doing what every guy and gal out there that's been screwed over by the government's been dreaming to do. I guarantee you could get half the men and women to enlist with you that's out there living in their cars. You gotta think of, man, you're celebrities now. I'm telling you, Bonnie, Buck is a changed man. He did his time and he is respectable now. A real gentleman. Wouldn't you like to be that way with Clyde? A proud, God-loving citizen of the U.S. of A? You know, Blanche, I really don't want you to think of me as rude, but you are speaking out of your ass, and you don't have a goddamn clue what you're saying. You are unmarried, living in sin, committing crimes, killing people? Oh, I have not killed anyone yet. You know where this is going to end up. Blanche, I've learned that in this life, you just got to enjoy the journey, because the outcome is always the same for everyone, even you, Blanche. But the kingdom of heaven awaits me, Bonnie. Where do you think you're headed? Bonnie, let's get packing. You, me, Buck, and Blanche, we're heading to Indiana and then Minnesota. That's right. What's in Indiana and Minnesota? Banks, state banks. Buck, what's going on? We're going to be famous and rich. That's what's going on. I don't understand. Well, you don't have to, baby, and that's OK, because all you're going to do today is stand back and observe. More like making a quick withdrawal. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't be alarmed, but this is a robbery. I'm Bonnie Parker. This here is the love of my life, Clyde Barrow. And I'm Buck Barrow. We are the Barrow Gang. Oh, my God, this is not happening. Uh, this is my wife, Blanche. Uh, don't mind her. She's just observing today. <laughs> We are supposed to be convincing them to turn themselves in, not aiding and abetting known criminals. You are aiding and abetting. This is all Buck's idea. That's right, Blanche. So knock it off, will you? That. Just look, that, baby. <laughs> that is a lot of money. <laughs> oh, baby, and there's a lot more. Well, that came from a lot me. more. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I declare. Don't do that. We sure as hell aren't gonna. <laughs> Just get it, boy. As we travel around this great country and hear all your stories of woe, the system is really not working. And it's about time we let everybody know.
I'd like to rent out a cabin for a few nights. And how many are we? Just me and my husband. Thank you kindly. Oh, and could you send over four chicken dinners and four beers in a little while? You and your husband must be awful hungry. <laughs> we certainly are. What's the deal with all the newspapers? Well, due to the fact we're in all of them, I figure we might as well hide behind them, too. Especially since half the National Guard Armory happens to be inside our cabin at the moment. Yeah, we are celebrities. We should be celebrating, not hiding out. We're celebrities who need to hide out if we want to continue being living, breathing the celebrities. We're fine. That's me and you have some fun. Beck, is that a rifle in your lap, or are you just happy to see me? That's a rifle. Well, I'm always happy to see you, Bonnie. OK, but that's enough. Blanche, can you do something about that husband of yours? No. I am sick and tired of him. You can have him. <sighs> and perhaps we can get better related. I mean, <laughs> we're already related, so we might as well keep it in the family. So this is the reason why you don't drink. <sighs> I'm sorry. It, it just went off. Well, that sounds familiar. Buck, what the hell do you think you're doing? God, I hope nobody heard that. They didn't. They just think it's Fourth of July fireworks. Yeah, except that was two weeks ago. Uh, operator, uh, pull me through to, to um, um, Captain William Baxter uh, or uh, Sheriff Holt Coffee. Yeah, I'll hold on. Come on, Bonnie. Nobody's coming. It's almost 11.30. Well, it doesn't look like it. Told you. We got lucky. No, we got stupid. Got to be more careful. I think we should split up. What? We're a team. Can't split up a team. Well, that is, unless uh, Bonnie, you and I go one way, and Clyde, you and Blanche go the other. Meet back up later on. You know, maybe Bonnie's right. We should be prepared in case something happens. That way we can find each other. What do you mean? We should come up with a code word. So if we do part ways, we can meet back up with each other later. Red beans. What? OK, that's a good one. So if someone yells out red beans, we contact their parents and meet back at their parents' home. I think you all are making too big of a deal about all this. Nothing's going to happen. Something is going to happen if you don't get your hands off my backside right this instant. You are a pig. And you're about as much fun as a bucket full of water. All right, all right, buddy, just calm down. Calm down. Come out with your hands up. We have you surrounded. We were forced to fight when the bullets started flying inside. For Bonnie and Clyde have no place to hide because there's only one end to this ride. When the shooting is done and there's no place to run, it won't come as any surprise. That's when death is near and the end is here. It brings all of us down to one size. Afternoon, Mrs. Parker. Are they dead? Just tell me, Dad. Is my daughter dead? Buck and Blanche Barrow were captured six days ago. Buck died yesterday at King's Daughter's Hospital in Iowa of complications involving his gunshot wounds. Blanche is having eye surgery due to her wounds. 
She's expected to recover, but she'll probably be sentenced to at least 10 years in prison. What about Clyde? Heard he got shot up pretty bad, but looks like he got away. And Bonnie? She's still with him, but Mrs. Parker, at this point, it's, it's only a matter of time. You thought they'd contact me. That's why you're here. Have they? Nope, not a word. You tell me if they did. She's still my daughter, Ted. What do you think? They're bringing in an expert, a former Texas Ranger named Frank Hamer. He's coming out of retirement to find them. Credited with over 53 kills of Texas criminals. Called upon me and Deputy Elkhorn to assist him. Uh, kind of we can identify both Bonnie and Clyde on site. You gonna kill my daughter, Ted? Gotta do my job. Then you do me a favor. You make it quick. I don't want her to suffer any more than she has to. How y'all doing? My name is Frank Hamer. I'm a former Texas Ranger. Some of you may have heard of me. I just been hired by Colonel Lee Simmons to hunt down Bonnie Parker and Clyde Burrow. Now I will bring them in. Dead or alive, it don't matter to me. Now I've already put together my team. It's Ted Hinton. He's been with me a long time. It's Bob Alcorn. And another Texas Ranger right there in the front row, that's BM Golf. BM, stand up. That's BM Golf. Now, we will get a job done. You can quote me on that. But how long it takes us is entirely up to you. Yeah, you. You newspaper guys. Now, Bonnie and Clyde are killers. Cold-blooded killers. They're wanted in the deaths of five law enforcement officers. Yeah, God knows how many civilians. And they have committed every crime you can imagine. Every crime. Theft, murder. Now, they're not some starstruck lovers having a little joyride. So as soon as the media stops reporting the public the way they really are, the sooner the public will understand these are the bad guys, and we can stop headlines. Give me that paper. Stop headlines like this. Look at that. As if they're our heroes. They're not. This last little escapade resulted in five dangerous convicted criminals escaping from prison, along with the murder of Major Croson, an honored and well-respected guard at the facility. Now, if you start showing Bonnie and Clyde in the real light of day, they'll soon find they have nowhere left to hide. And if the papers turn against them, so will the public. I'll say it again. If the papers turn against them, so will the public. They believe what they read. Am I making myself understood? Good, good. I hope so. and dead. Eyewitness report says Bonnie and Clyde fired the first shot. Who was the third man? Must have been Henry Methvin. He's, he's one of the men they broke out of Eastman Prison. He matches the description. But this time, the papers aren't sticking up for them. They're calling them the Great Vine Slayers, and someone is offering a $1,000 reward for the killers. Not for their capture. They want their dead bodies. And Texas Governor Ma Ferguson's offering another $500 reward on top of that. A lot of money. They're finally being viewed as the killers they really are. I like hearing that. Hey, the eyewitness said the third man split up from Bonnie and Clyde, and he heard him yell out, red beans, before taking off. What? Let me see that. I don't know what that means, red beans. I don't know what that means. It was Bonnie and Clyde. It was. How can you be certain? 
Red beans is Bonnie's favorite dish. Must be some kind of code. I don't know how you know that, but uh, I'll accept it if you're certain. Are you certain? I bet my life on it. So, what does it mean? You got one person in custody might be able to tell us. He's right, we do. Come on, let's go find out. Present and accounted for. I'd like to ask you a few questions regarding Bonnie Parker and Clydeboro. They're responsible for the death of my husband and my current condition. What is it you'd like to know? You know what the term red beans refers to? Besides the dish? Besides the dish. It was a code that Clyde came up with, meaning if any of us got in trouble or separated from the rest, we could meet up again at our family's home. Whose family home? Whomever yelled out the code, I presume. Henry Methvin. Henry Methvin. Well, thank you, Mrs. Burrow. You've been a great help. I'm happy to be of service to you. Perhaps you'll remember this when my case comes up for review. We will indeed. Henry Methvin's father lives in Shreveport, Louisiana. Here we go. So now you can bear witness to the true story of Bonnie and Clyde. They lived their life despite the strife, and they loved till the day they died. They say no love lasts forever, that a bullet will stop any tide. And that may be true for some others, but it's not true for Bonnie and Clyde. I love you, Bonnie. And I love you more. Read it again. I just read it. I know, but I want to hear it again. Hey, when they show up, shoot to kill. Let's make this quick. I heard you used to be kind of fond of Bonnie Parker, and she turned you down. There ain't nothing like a little revenge, huh? No, that's not it. Made a promise to someone. Can't wait to kill the bastards anyway. I always found Bonnie sexy. <laughs> yeah. This is it. It's Clyde. It is Clyde. Here we go. This one's more for me. The Beginning of the End by Bonnie Parker. Now the tale I'm about to tell you is the truth, the author's side. And if anyone tells you different, then they didn't know Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, they have a bad reputation. Folks say they steal and cheat and kill. I'm not gonna deny that, but this wasn't just a cheap thrill. There's a difference between fact and fiction. The truth has many sides. Right can be wrong within the law, and justice never really abides. But through all the crimes and the murders, there's been one man by my side. He's the love of my life. And the wrong that is right. And his name is none other than Clyde. I love you, Bonnie. I love you more. He's gone through a lot with the coppers who jailed him and threw away the key but he wouldn't give up or stop fighting until we both could be free. The path we choose is not easy, no matter what the rest of them say, but we refuse to submit to the system while there's still some light in the day. Now the 
tale I'm about to tell you is the truth, the author said. If anyone tells you different, and they didn't know Bonnie and Clyde.